Hi, I'm Jesse Alexander, and welcome to Glory and Defeat, the story of the Franco-Prussian War of 1870 to 1871. Starting in July, we're going to cover the war every week in real time, exactly 151 years later, so we can help you understand the conflict that changed the course of European history and help set the stage for two world wars. So before we start our weekly episodes, let's begin with a question. Why is the Franco-Prussian War so important? Well, for one thing, it affected an entire generation of people in Germany and in France. Three million men served under arms, 190,000 died, and 230,000 were wounded. Modern weapons like breech-loading cannons and rifles brought never-before-seen killing power to the battlefield, and railways and mobilization plans moved mass armies of conscripts to those killing grounds with unprecedented speed. Modern war had arrived. Away from the battlefields, citizens of Paris ate rats to avoid starving during the siege, and 400,000 Frenchmen spent months in German captivity as prisoners of war. And of course, the people of Alsace and part of Lorraine, who'd been French in 1870, became German in 1871. All of these experiences would not be forgotten in the years before 1914. The Franco-Prussian War was also the last of what the Germans call the Wars of Unification. Victory in 1871 allowed the creation of a united German state for the first time, and the Germany we know today would not exist without it. The fact that the German Empire came into existence thanks to a victorious war meant that this new and powerful country would be prone to militarism, disregarding norms in international relations, and resolving issues with violence. Many Germans were almost intoxicated by their seemingly invincible military might, even years after the war. This was the case for a young Adolf Hitler, who later wrote in Mein Kampf that as a child, he fell in love with war and soldiering after reading his father's books about the War of 1870-71. His father didn't actually have a library, and Hitler grew up in Austria, but in late 19th century Germany, this kind of exaltation of the army and its victory created a militaristic society. For France, the war was a humiliation. Its proud army had been defeated, the emperor captured, and the Second Empire destroyed. The Third Republic was formed in the crucible of a crushing defeat, and that trauma would also have consequences. The war had barely ended when bloody civil conflict saw French troops massacre their fellow citizens in the Paris Commune. French society also became more military focused as a way of restoring pride and nurturing the desire for revenge. France went looking for allies to help in a future conflict with Germany, and they found one in Russia, a power deeply engaged in the Balkans. So the Franco-Prussian War left a legacy of a united and militaristic Germany, a wounded French Republic looking for revenge, and was arguably the first modern war in history. Its impact was felt in 1914-18, 39-40, and yes, even today. Now, an ambitious and in-depth documentary series like Glory and Defeat can only exist with your direct support. So if you want to contribute to the project, you can go to realtimehistory.net slash gloryanddefeat, and you can even get some cool rewards in return. So join us for Glory and Defeat as we tell the story of the Franco-Prussian War week by week, only on Real Time History.